The Supreme Court on Wednesday restrained the federal government from implementing the Friday deadline for the currency swap. A seven-man panel of the apex courts led by Justice John Okoro in a unanimous ruling granted the interim injunction restraining the federal government, the Central Bank of Nigeria, and the commercial banks from implementing the Friday terminal date of the old Naira uh, notes. Now, on Wednesday, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank urged the CBN to extend the time limits. The IMF and the World Bank stated that the short time frame for the currency was causing hardships across the country. Well, joining us to discuss and break down that Supreme Court judgment is Dr. Mondo Bani. He is the chairman, NBA section on public interest and developmental law uh, in Speedo. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, Dr. Bani, and Happy New Year. Same to you. Thank you for having me. Great. Explain to the lay person um, what the AGF means by what he said um, and, of course, um, how he described that Supreme Court judgment and what the Supreme Court judgment is. Because the, the AGF is also on the grounds that the Supreme Court does not have jurisdiction um, to even be sitting on this matter that they have already ruled on. Uh, so break it down to us for the common person to understand. Yeah, what happened is that, uh, of course, you and I were aware that there is a federal government uh, policy of redesigning the Naira. And then the policy says you have a deadline within which to bring back the old currency. And then the new currency now will now take over uh, to operate in the country. It was formerly supposed to end some sometime in, I think, in January. But it was further extended to 10th of uh, February, which is tomorrow. Yeah. Now, a lot of people have been experiencing uh, so much hardship uh, concerning this particular policy of the federal government. People are not seeing the old currency. They're not neither also uh, neither seeing the, the new currency. If you go to bank, you have seen the queues and all that. You see the people having crisis. In fact, as a result of the problem of the policy, some of the banks have shut their, their gate against customers because of the rowdiness of... Uh, the, the, the behavior of Nigerians in trying to have access to the money they have in their account. Now, three state governments went to court, uh, straight to Supreme Court. Now, there is a particular section of the Constitution that allows states, whenever they feel that there is a legal dispute between the state and the, and the Federation, they have a right to bring uh, action before the Supreme Court. And that is the instances where the Supreme Court can have what they call original jurisdiction. That is where the Supreme Court now will behave like a court of first instance to hear matters as if it's a trial court. It's under Section 232, subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. If there is any legal dispute between state and state or between the state and the Federation, you go straight to the Supreme Court. So those three state governments felt that this actually has occasioned some legal dispute. And they also feel there is a legal right. Uh, for them to ventilate before the Supreme Court. So they invoke the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court and brought a motion, what they call ex parte, without putting the Attorney General, that is the Federation or the Federal Government, on notice, asking that maybe they also swear to an affidavit of urgency. So that since the deadline is coming and it may occasion very big hardship if the Sup Supreme Court does not intervene, so they ask for extension uh, of time within which this monetary policy uh, will uh, become uh, operational and, and have a deadline. But stopping it at 10th of February will occasion so much uh, injustice on the part of the citizens. So they asked the Supreme Court to ask the federal go government to maintain what they call uh, uh, status quo ante, that they should maintain an order. They should not in any way go ahead to implement the stoppage of the currency in circulation from tomorrow being Friday. So the Supreme Court now, in their wisdom, without deciding the issue of the prediction, which will come later. So, okay, since somebody is saying that there is an emergency, since somebody is saying there is going to be an irreparable damage and injury if this particular policy is not stopped, oh, federal government, for the meantime, can you hold on and then come on 15th of February with whatever your environment or a counter affidavit is in order to tell us why we should not stop you from stopping the uh, circulation of the money uh, within the timeline you have given to the to, to the entire country. So what happened yesterday by the Supreme Court, Supreme Court just heard only the side of the federal government, I mean, of the state government, the three state government, and say, federal government, for the meantime, stop the, the stoppage of this policy. 
until you come and tell us why we should not stop it permanently. So that is actually what happened. So I hope I've been able to communicate to everyone to understand what has happened. The Supreme Court is yet to decide on issue of jurisdiction. Now, the, the federal government, you know, the Attorney General of the federal government is saying that the Supreme Court has no jurisdiction over this matter, but that cannot be decided until they come formally before the court, which I understand they have filed an action to the same one that the federal government, I mean, the state government, do, I mean, the Supreme Court has no jurisdiction over this particular matter. So the, they will file that apl application. The state government also will reply. So the Supreme Court now will now sit and hear the argument of both the Attorney General and hear the argument of the state government as to whether the Supreme Court has jurisdiction over the matter that the state government have brought before them. That exactly will happen on the 15th of January, I mean of February, uh, which is next week. Okay. Now, um, it's very interesting that um, the AGF has gotten into this matter. Um, let's not forget that this suit was filed by three state governors, um, three state governments, you know, pushing on this issue. But I want to hear your thoughts. Um, maybe not just as a lawyer, but as a Nigerian, because I'm sure that you have also experienced a situation where um, you are unable, you probably have, you are one of the first people to put in your old money, hoping that you can get the new money. But I don't know if you've been able to access any whatsoever. And that's been the case for many Nigerians, those who have to queue for fuel, um, those who have to pay their way to work and those who have to buy food, those who rely on daily monies, you know, little monies to pay for transportation, as opposed to those who can do cash uh, or online transfers. Um, what's your position generally on this move by the central bank? And, and with the explanation that the central bank governor has given on this particular move, because my previous guest is saying, uh, or had said that um, this is not a policy because it, it was not backed by a policy document, but then, well, it's happening. Um, do you think it could have been done a better way? And what would have been the, um, you know, the other uh, way that they could have done it? Yeah, my thinking is that the, the policy is nowhere thought out. Uh, you are asking people to return the old currency and you give a deadline, or you give a deadline that within this particular time, there will be enough new money in circulation for everyone. Now you now see that even before the end of the uh, uh, deadline you've given for the return of the old currency, you can't see the old currency, you can't see the new currency. Did you really uh, thought out this particular policy very well? How much of the money have you printed, you know, the new money that should be in circulation? Was it even right for you to give a deadline? Knowing fully well the implication of the deadline, that if you give a deadline, it's going to create a problem if you have not printed enough money in the system. There is no enough new money circulating in the system. The banks are having problems. They are complaining that enough is not being given to them. So I am a, I am a victim. I go to bank and I am being given for the first time in my life. I'm being given only five thousand naira, and they are giving me old notes and they are telling me, "Please don't even hide it. Don't even allow people to see." I say, "What are you saying?" And it took almost two hours for you to give me the five thousand. I have never, for the past uh, 20, twenty years, ever gone to bank to go and take twenty thousand or even fifty thousand naira. You know, the least I would take is hundred. They are giving me five thousand. What am I going to do with five thousand? I can't even buy. Uh, uh, 25 liters of fuel with 5,000 naira. So it, it has created a, a big problem. You saw the viral video of somebody that even, you know, stripped himself naked in the banking hall. You, see, you saw the viral video of his son attacking a bank. So the situation has created so much hardship. And then the apps, the apps of the banks are not working. You use your ATM, is also not working. So you have not even created a conducive environment for your cashless policy. So it is a policy now that is inflicting more hardship. And you say you targeted it against the politicians. Do you see any of the politicians on queue? Do you go to any bank and see any politician queuing up for any money? It is either they, they rather the poor people you are seeing on queue. So you have you know targeted the policy against the police uh, politician, but the politicians are not failing it. I'm sure you had a reply said that the particular governor was giving five hundred million by by the bank manager. So the politicians that are targeted are not feeling the impact. It is the poor people, so it is not a way to that pro, uh, plan. And everyone was really smiling when Central Bank actually granted the entire order, asking that this particular policy should not, you know, take effect. You know, finally on Friday, it should be extended, so that time will be given for acclimatization. We should be able to have the new money properly in circulation. Let it get to the hands of people, so that we can begin to live our normal life. 
Now we are living as if we are back to the ages of 17th century, where you now trade by barter. Mm. You can't buy anything with cash. You have your money. You can't have access to your money. What kind of, what kind of, are we in a war situation? So it's not a way thought out. Plan. And I think it shows lack, lack of competence. It's clearly, clearly, clearly mindless. You know, for people to, to be going undergoing this offer, you don't have fuel, you don't have money, and, they, you, they, and then there are queues all over the like, queues, you know, and then there is hold up everywhere, and then there is no light. So what, what is happening? How, how do you have to operate a policy that is inflicting so much hardship on the people? I think it's not way thought out. To me, I am very happy with the I mean, with the extension that the uh, Supreme Court uh, case is going to engender. And if I am, I mean, my way to advise the Supreme Court, they should not allow the federal government to have their way with this issue of deadline. I know that are those who say, "Oh, I'm happy with it." It's targeted against those who are going to buy vote and all that. But I don't think so. I tell you that the person with you have access to the new money and go ahead and buy the vote if they want to. If Nigerians want to go and take 5,000 and 10,000 in order to vote the wrong persons, good and fine. All of us will be victims of bad governance as, as we vote in bad people from 2023. That, that's my take on this. Uh, let, uh, um, you and my previous guest seem to be on the same side. Uh, he, be, he was a bit more in-depth uh, about some of the policies and programs that um, this CBN governor has undertaken over the years and, and how they've all panned out. Um, if this is the case, and we all have seen these things play out over the years uh, and for mr president who actually um kept him after the previous government who retained him uh, should we not be looking at having a better cbn governor should we, i mean I, I know that this government is coming to a close but why has the cbn yeah. governor been around for so long if these policies and programs have not in any way benefited us neither has it benefited mm. our economy the, the people who are put him there are, are no better. They don't have any better idea. And they don't see anything wrong he has done in the system. You know, under his administration, uh, the, 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 the forex, I mean, our, our exchange rate is skyrocketed. Today, to get a dollar is 750. To get a pound, it's 945 naira per pound under the policy of this present governor. There are many things the man has done wrong. He has messed up our economic system. He has messed up our monetary system. He has messed up, you know, the the the, the function of even CBA. Totally, he's supposed to have been uh, not renewed. His uh, his tenure is supposed not to have been renewed. But because the government that appoint and that actually retained him knows nothing, you know, in terms of good governance and all that, they they are of the same level, uh, mediocrity. That's why they have retained him. So I think that if a new government comes in, uh, uh, MFA should not be retained. As the central bank governor, he has messed up our system. He's very incompetent. He has not shown, you know, understanding of monetary policy of a country. Rather, he has put us in jeopardy economically and in managing our, our forex, managing everything about us. I can't have money now to, you know, those who want to train their kids abroad cannot. You know, the policy is so bad. You can't have dollar. You have your money, your dollar account, your domicile, domicile account. You say you want dollar now. You can't walk into the bank now and they give you a dollar. You have to apply and wait, and they can only give you another one or two thousand dollars. Where does that happen? So it shows that the economy is sick and under a very wrong management, you know, uh, of the central bank government. So I, I don't think the man should be returned by any government that is serious after the change of governance you know, in 2023. The man is incompetent, has not in any way proved that he understands how to manage a central bank, and that is my take about it. Uh, finally, before I let you go, uh, Doctor, um, as much as uh, uh, for some people this um, move by the Supreme Court might be a welcome development, uh, it still doesn't change the fact that people still do not have access to monies. People are not able to get monies. Uh, I, I mean, my office is directly opposite a bank, and you see people sit, wait, lie down, just waiting and hoping that monies, uh, they can place their hand on monies. Now, don't forget, we're getting close to an election season, and we're about... 17 or 16 to 16 days to the general elections on February 25. How long do you think Nigerians can hold on? How long can they bear what's happening? I mean, you've seen what, what's happened in Ogun State, in Oyo State, uh, and several other places, and that's just pockets. Um, how long can people hold on hoping to see these monies? Because it also, again, looks like these monies are nowhere to be found, even though there is a few, uh, there are a few places where you can get access to cash, but it's not enough. How long can people hold on to, especially for those who wholly rely on cash? I think there is a meeting that is built for tomorrow uh, between the, the president and the, is it the economic council or, or whoever, whatever their name is. Uh, I think they, they may come up with a policy 
of trying to address and mitigate the harshness of this uh, present situation in which we have found ourselves. I think that the people cannot hold any longer. People are not smiling. People are getting hungry. And the hardship is increasing by the day. So any serious-minded government should be able now to come up with a policy that will make the money available. I don't know what the central governor is you know, planning to do. But the banks, they are not helping matters either. Most of them are involved in holding even the new currency. Even those who have been given enough are not bringing it in speculation. So I think there must be a change of attitude of the bankers. There must be a change of attitude of the central bank. And I think the government will come up with a pronunciation of policy that will actually have to change the present situation that has actually inflicted so much hardship on, on, on Nigerians. You know, that, that is my take. I think by Friday, we should be able to have a clearer view as to what the government is planning to do. Because as I said, election is you know, around the corner. Well, how are people going to even move? The issue of logistics, the issue of you know even paying those that will be at the put for you, your agents and the pulling agents and all that. These things will require cash and all that. So I don't know how they're going to do this thing. So I think that something has to be done in terms of pronunciation and pronouncement by the government in order to ensure that there is mitigation of the present hardship we're undergoing. I think that's something will be done. That, that is my hope about it. Well, uh, Dr. Mondubani, always a pleasure to have you join us on the show. Dr. Mondubani is the chairman of the NBA section on Public Interest and Developmental Law, SPIDO. Thank you so much, Doctor, for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's a long time I've seen you. Your beautiful face on television. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it on the show tonight. Don't forget the elections are a few days away. Get ready. Find out what party you want to vote for. Find out what the logo is. Know all you need to know about the voting process in itself. It's not enough to get a PVC, but know how to vote so that on that day, your vote will be valid and not invalidated. I'm Mary Anakun. Have a good evening.